Chadwick Boseman forever. Also, Angela Bassett better get a Best Supporting Actor nomination for this. I'm serious. If she doesn't, I'm in a riot. Hi, everyone. Uh, you see the shirt. We're talking about another movie. Uh, movies in, and Marvel thing. Movies and TV so we do here. It's Raisin Pop on the Grand, everybody. It's me, the movie and TV guy. And uh, we're here to talk about a movie. Uh, and that movie is um, an obscure little indie movie. I think it's the new Mumblecore movie. It's called Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, Black Panther. <laughs> Black Panther of Wakanda Forever is uh, directed by Ryan Coogler, whose previous work includes the terrific Fruitvale Station, the terrific Creed, and the terrific Black Panther. Uh, this is the 30th film in the Mar 30th uh, feature film in the ever-expanding Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it is the final full-length film um, in Phase 4, and it is the penultimate installment overall in Phase 4, uh, followed with the epilogue, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, which is coming out in a couple weeks. And we'll review that when we get to it. Um, but this is Black Panther Wakanda Forever, co-written and directed by Ryan Coogler. And what is this film about? Well, um, a lot of things, but let's begin with basically what it is. Um, when we begin the story, it is um, a good deal of time after... Uh, the heroic battle of the Avengers against Thanos in Avengers Endgame, uh, which among their numbers included um, King T'Challa, as played by by the late Javik Boseman, and uh, various other members of Waka of the citizenry of Wakanda. When we begin the story, uh, King T'Challa's health is in decline, and because of the actions of Killmonger, which burned to the ground, burned to cinder all of the heart-shaped uh, plant that they used to give the Black Panthers power and to heal him. Um, there is not, uh, Shuri cannot uh, recreate it in time, and sadly, King T'Challa passes away, um, as sadly the late, great Chadwick Boseman did back in 2020. And um, we begin the story. The entire nation of Wakanda is in grief, but that also leaves an opening for the world government seemingly to exploit Wakanda. Um, much to the chagrin of Queen Ramunda, the mother of King T'Challa, she is played terrifically by Angela Bassett. And Shuri, in her grief, has decided we're not going to have any more Panthers. I'm just going to give up doing the trying to recreate this. We just got to, I just got to, and she, and she can't burn the ceremonial rope. That is a, a that she must burn a year hence is a year hence from T'Challa's death when we begin the proper plot, which is that uh, various world superpowers um, are trying to mine a uh, vibranium, the rare mineral that is all over the Marvel universe that is primarily found in Wakanda. They soon um, have an encounter with the mysterious uh, being from a hidden world. Uh, called the Telecon, and the, the leader is Kul Kul Khan, a.k.a. Uh, Namor, and who is played um, in this film by a newcomer. I want to look up his name. Hold on a second. Namor actor. I hope, I hope I don't mispronounce your name. Tanakh Huerta? I hope I said that correctly. And you're phenomenal in this. Um who has sinister plans for Wakanda, and those plans involve someone who has control of vibranium and is using that. It is a, a plucky young inventor named Riri, Riri Williams. She is played by um, uh, a lot of newcomers in this one. Hold on a second. This is what you subscribe for, folks. Uh, she is played by Dominique Thorne. I hope I said that name correctly, too. Um, who uh, has built an armor that could rival the great Tony Starks. And um, and maybe will go on to become the hero known as Ironheart. Um, in the process of protecting her, um, they soon incur the wrath of Namor. So along with the national grief of Wakanda, they also are on the brink of war with this hidden world, as well as the world government. Among the flunkies of which include Everett Ross, played by Martin Freeman, and um, uh, uh, of the shadowy figure we've seen in some previous Marvel films, played once again by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who may be starting a team 
of anti-heroes known as the Thunderbolts. Hmm. And uh, together, uh, with all this plot going on, uh, the various leaders of Wakanda, including the always terrific M'Baku, played by the incredible Winston Duke, uh, are forced to go to battle. Can they win against Namor the right way? Or will revenge be on the table? And if and after that, will they finally be able to grieve the loss of their great leader and our great actor, Chadwick Boseman? Let the battle and uh, the tears flow and the battle begin. So, that was a lot. I understand that. So, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, that barely scratches the surface. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. All right. I was not doing this when the first Black Panther came out. Um... I started this channel in 2021, so knowing that, um, I did not review the first Black Panther. However, I did review it on Letterboxd um, the day of Chadwick Boseman's death as a tribute to him. And I gave that movie five stars. Uh, I've seen it more than once, and I loved it the first time. I absolutely adored it the second time. I have to be honest with you guys. Wakanda Forever might be better than the first Black Panther. This movie is maybe one of the very best movies Marvel's ever made. I fucking loved this movie. I loved this movie. Like, this might, this is, like, going to be on my best of the year, loved Wakanda Forever. And what I loved about this movie is it has that rare quality that only that a select few, and really it's been so far with this movie, too, um, where they just kind of let moments happen without undercutting with humor. That's not to say there isn't humor in this film, but they never it never undercuts the emotion. When they inevitably talk about Chadwick, and the whole film is sort of bookended in this journey of grief at the beginning of this film, you have to cry. Like, it's one of those things where it's done so beautifully, it's quiet, and it's subtle, and it's profound. Even the, even the, one of the, even the uh, shawarma, which we'll get to, um, is profound. It's a perfect capper on this, and it's weirdly not setting up anything. It's just there to be sort of the epilogue of this movie to theirs. His legacy hangs over this entire movie, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like a dirge, because the spirit of this con this country of Wakanda and this you know this continent of Wakanda, and the people in it, and the cast of characters, and, and their their spirit, and their amazing. And the groundwork that Chadwick Boseman and Ryan Coogler laid in the first Black Panther is enriched in this installment. It's enriched, and it's uplifting, and you just want to cheer. And then, to top it off, he creates a further dynamic with uh, the undersea world run by Namor. And Namor, like Killmonger before him, is a complex villain. He's an interesting character who, again, brings up a moral argument about... The fact that sometimes the people we... That the, it's kind of been a threat in these movies, and I think it's a perfect threat, is that sometimes, you know, every everybody's hero is someone else's monster. And there is that question that's been in both movies, is like, the of the flaws of a system like Wakanda, the strengths of it, of course, but also noticing the flaws and what it can do to that side of the world. This is just... And it's a Disney Marvel movie. And I love Marvel. You know this. I adore the MCU. But there is sort of that, even in stuff I really love, like even like She-Hulk, there is that sort of carpet sheen of Marveliness to it. This feels big. This movie, but intimate. This feels almost like... I felt like I was watching kind of an event for the first time this whole year. I really felt like I was in a movie that was huge. And I loved it. Huge in its emotion, huge in this. Angela Bassett. Can we talk about her for a second? That woman is long overdue for more credit. Credit. She is so great in this film. And she's so great in everything. Like, And the scene, it's in the trailer, but the, in the context of the movie, that speech she gives. Oh my god. It is utterly perfect. It is just perfect. Guys, I love Black Panther Wakanda forever, and the streak is going to keep going. I'm going to give it. You see it. Bang. Five out of five stars. Five stars plus. 
This is one of the best, truly the best films I've seen all year. Like, top tier of, of all movies. I love this movie. This is one of the best Marvel movies ever. Ever. Even better than the first one, which is also one of the best. This is even higher to me than that. Um, just, I, I adored this film. Please go see this film. You will. Everyone's going to see this movie. But yeah. Five to five stars for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, that's it. Let's close the book on it. Trailer Trash. Um, we do have some trailer trash today. Um, we are going to talk about, we actually have quite a few. Um, and some relatively new ones. Some of them. Megan, it's a newer trailer. God, it looks really bad. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves looks good. John Wick Chapter 4, let's fucking go! Looks really good. Uh, Creed 3 looks good. Super Mario, The Super Mario Brothers movie looks good. Shazam! Fury of the Gods talked about it looks good. The Little Mermaid, uh, this looks good. People need to stop complaining, it looks good. Um, Ant-Man the Wasp, Quantumania, this, I'm really pumped for this. I, I, Jonathan Majors, man, Jonathan Majors, I can't wait. And then finally, Avatar The Way of Water. Finally, it's the newer trailer. And it does look good. I hope I hope it is. Because it's... I think we kind of need it <laughs> to be good. Um, especially since it's going to be three hours and ten minutes long. Holy shit. Um, so is Babylon. We're going to have, in the span of a week, two movies that are three and a half hours almost. Um, and was there for me? Yes. During the credits, there is a wonderful scene. During the credits. There's nothing after except for a title card. That's all I'll say. There's like a... You know what you know what it is. It's, it's it's confirmation of if if or if not someone will return. That's it. Um, all right, that is it. Um, we kind of are done for the weekend. This is going to be kind of we might this weekend. I'm going to try to check out some movies that I've missed the last couple of weeks, including on the All Quiet on the Western Front. But otherwise, when it comes to like new movies, this is Black Panther. Is it? It's the weekend of just Black Panther. So yeah, um, that's it. Uh, trailer trash, or we already did that. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, that'll all be next time, and until next time, I'm Grant the Movie and TV Guy. I see it all. And I'm happy to share it with you. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I love you all. Class is missed. I love you three thousand. Be kind to one another. Uh, if you like this video, give a like if you wanna. Give a subscribe if you wanna. Give it the bell. I don't know what it does, but that's what you're supposed to do, or so I've been told. Leave a comment, even if it's Hey Grant, I like waffles. It really helps out. Uh, thanks to everyone who watched the stream last night, by the way, on Luke's channel. Um, if you want to find me also reviews, listen to other fun stuff, you can check me out on letterbest.com at Raisin Popcorn with Grant. Twitter, I'm at Raise Grant. You can also find me on Facebook, Raisin Popcorn with Grant. Serialized, all one word, all lowercase, Raised on Popcorn. You can also check out my podcast, Raisin Popcorn with Grant, the podcast on Spotify and Anchor. Some of you already have, but even if you haven't, take care of yourself, take care of your mental health. It's incredibly important. And I want to know down below, what did you think of Black Panther, Wakanda Forever? Did you like the movie? Did you hate the movie? Think my opinion's good? Think I'm full of shit? Comment below, let me know. And until we meet again, we were all raised on popcorn. Make my with extra butter. Catch you guys next time. Chadwick Boseman forever. Thank you.